Good morning, Grade Eight. How are you all today? Today we are going to talk about fundamental rights. So, what are the fundamental rights? Um, we will be doing it from your course book. So, what I want you all to do is, I want you all to open your course books to content sheet one and week four. Okay. So, what what will you be doing? You will be opening content sheet one, week four, while I will be teaching you what fundamental rights are. So every country provides its citizens with the fundamental rights. Fundamental rights means the basic rights. Okay, what I mean by fundamental? Fundamental means the basic, the crux. Okay. Now these are the basic rights that have been given by the Constitution of India to its people, to you and me. Okay. Constitution has given it to the citizens of the country. Everybody who is a citizen of this country gets these fundamental rights. Now it helps us. Uh, it helps people to live life with dignity. What do these fundamental rights do? These fundamental rights allow a person to live his life with dignity. Okay, these rights are enshrined in Part Three of our Constitution. Which part? These rights are there in Part Three of our Constitution. And if these rights are violated, a person can go to court. of law for the remedy so you can even go to the court of law for the remedy that these rights have been violated and you want an action now what are certain fundamental rights right to equality right to freedom right against exploitation okay so now let's do one right at a time okay so we will be studying about each right in detail and let us start with right to equality right to equality is a very important in our society like ours the purpose of right is to establish rule of law there should be a rule of law where all citizens are treated equally okay it has provisions from article 14 to article 18 in our constitution to provide for equality before the law for the protection of the law to all persons in india and also prohibit discrimination on the grounds of religion race caste sex or place of birth so right to equality says that there should not be any discrimination uh in uh, on on anybody on the basis of whether he is born in india uh, whether he is born in uh, what do you call chandigarh or punjab whether you are born in chandigarh and punjab is one and the same thing but whether you are born in chandigarh or you are born in hyderabad you will not be discriminated okay whether you are a girl or a boy you will not be discriminated whether you are a hindu or a muslim you will not be discriminated whether you are a shudra or a brahmin you will not be discriminated so no discrimination and everybody would be treated equal in the eyes of law now equality before the law the constitution guarantees that all citizens still will be in equal before the law law will provide justice to everybody in the same manner it means that everyone will be equally protected by the law of the country no person is above the law and uh, nobody is above the law law is above everyone okay now discrimination the state cannot discriminate against its citizens on the basis of religion race caste sex or place of birth that we already talked about every citizen has equal access to restaurants hotels uh, movie theaters and uh, hospitals everywhere you can go everywhere everywhere in uh, across the country you can go everywhere okay nobody will tell you okay you are hindu you are not allowed here or you are muslim you are not allowed here or you are uh, Shudra, you will not allow be allowed here. The constitution says the law says that you are allowed everywhere. Now, equality of opportunity to all citizens in matter of public public employment. This means everybody will be allowed to sit for government jobs. Everybody will get equal opportunities to have a government job in their hand. Okay, uh, but. the the government has provided some reservations to the scst and obc and the reason for providing the reservation for these people is because earlier okay before independence these people were oppressed a lot okay because of that they were not able to grow so the government has given them a little push a little leverage that even they can come out of their shells and they can also gain the confidence of getting a job and then their future generations will obviously rise up now abolition of untouchability 
so earlier there was untouchability that was practiced okay and uh, uh, the right to equality says that untouchability will not be practiced it will be abolished and what is uh, untouchability basically means that the high class uh, treat the lower class as untouchables they don't allow them to eat in their own uh, in to come to their houses or eat in their plates or they don't um, that is what untouchability is treating somebody as an untouchable so that is also not there in india anymore okay abolition of titles earlier people were known as uh, given titles okay given um, before their names they were added uh, there was something added okay like lord or sir but now it's all gone you uh, nobody has any title anymore okay now right to freedom right to freedom says that you will agree that freedom is the best uh, is most cherished of every living being you know that we all want freedom right you want freedom i want freedom human beings definitely want and need freedom you also want to have freedom the constitution of india provides right to freedom to all its citizens the right is stipulated in from article 19 to article 22 Article nineteen to Article twenty two of your Constitution talks about the right to freedom. Now the following are the four categories to right to freedom. Okay, now so there are six types of freedoms that are mentioned in Article nineteen of the Constitution: freedom of speech and expression, freedom of to assemble peacefully without any arms, freedom to form associations and unions, freedom to move freely throughout the territory of India, freedom to reside and settle in any part of India, freedom to practice any profession or to carry any occupation, trade or business. So let's start with the first one: freedom of speech and expression. You can. speak in whatever language you want to you can express your thoughts in whatever language you want to freedom to assemble peacefully you can uh, go in for parties you can conduct uh, run some rallies but without any arms without any weapons freedom to form associations you can form an association you can form an union there are uh, many unions and many organizations freedom to move freely throughout india you can go to ladakh also and you can go to kanyakumari also and then you can go to punjab and also you can go to bengal also so you can move anywhere you can settle anywhere freedom to settle in any part of india you can make a house in chandigarh and you can make a house in haryana and then you can make a house in uh, what do you call uh, calcutta you can make a house in chennai wherever you want to freedom to practice any profession you want to be a teacher you be a teacher you want to be a lawyer you can be a lawyer anything if you want to go in for a trade or a business we have this sort of freedom the purpose of providing this these freedoms is to build and maintain an environment for the proper proper functioning of a democracy however the country, constitution has authorized the state to impose reasonable restrictions there are reasonable restrictions like right now in the covid times uh, many uh, states have sealed their borders okay that is fine okay the, the state can impose reasonable restrictions under the constitution of india restrictions may be put on the right to freedom of speech or expression okay in interest of sovereignty integrity and security of <coughs> india friendly relationship with foreign state public order decency or morality okay right to assemble peacefully without arms we've talked about right to form unions we've already talked about right to freely move throughout the territory of india we've talked about and right to practice any uh, profession we have talked about that protection in respect of conviction of for offences article 20 of the constitution provides for the protection in respect of conviction of, for offences no one can be convinced for an act that was not offence at the time of its commission and no one can be given punishment greater than what was provided in law prevalent at the time of the commission so this says that if uh, if you conduct if you've done a mistake if you have done an offense then uh, nobody uh, can punish you more or less okay whatever the government whatever the law says you will get that much punishment also no one will be prosecuted and punished for the same offense more than once and if you have been given a punishment one time it, like you will not be getting a punishment again for the same offense like uh, for for one offense like suppose on 23rd of july you did something bad okay uh, somebody did some offense he gets punished for that offense once he can't get punished for the same offense twice or thrice or four times or five times protection of life and personal property uh, personal liberty as provided by article number 22 21 no one can be deprived of his 
or her personal liberty except accordance to the procedure of law that is easy protection against arrest and detention in certain cases <clears throat> it is provided in article 22 that whenever a person is arrested he or she should be informed before arresting a person we should we will inform you that you will be arrested as soon as possible on the grounds of arrest and should be allowed to consult a defendant by legal practitioner of his choice so we will give him give him this benefit of doubt also that you go and talk to your legal practitioner लॉयर मोर ओवर द अरेस्टेड पर्सन मस्ट बी प्रोड्यूस बिफोर द मजिस्ट्रेट विद इन ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स तो बिफोर ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स देर शुड बी द पर्सन शुड बी पुट इन फ्रंट ऑफ द मैजिस्ट्रेट द केस ऑफ पर्सन अरेस्टेड अंडर द प्रिवेंटेड प्रिवेंटेड लॉ हैज ऑल्सो बीन रेफर टू एन एडवाइजरी बोर्ड विद इन थ्री पीरियड ऑफ पीरियड ऑफ थ्री मंथस ऑफ हिज अरेस्ट सो यू पुट द केस इन फ्रंट ऑफ द एडवाइजरी बोर्ड ऑल्सो विद इन uh three months now what will happen if the state misuses its power in the name of reasonable restrictions who will decide reasonableness obviously sometimes what happens obviously it's never happened but sometimes what would happen if the state okay if your particular state um uses its misuses its power then what will happen according to the constitution only the court can decide this issue and not the government so no government will ever decide government is separate from the judiciary okay so the judiciary the court will decide whether it's an offense or whether it's a reasonable restriction or not reasonable restriction or whatever the state has done is good or bad whether it's uh, whether it was supposed to be done or not supposed to be done the final right is with the court only some of the fundamental rights are enjoyed by the foreigners and not all for example right to equality before law right to freedom of religion are enjoyed by foreigners also uh but most of the fundamental rights are enjoyed by indian citizens only so most of the fundamental rights are enjoyed by you and me okay now let's talk about right against exploitation you may have seen that small children were used to work in the shop earlier so 3 years chotu 5 years chotu 6 years chotu but now you if the 6 uh, year old chotu is working you can just call the police and the person will get arrested this is there okay so uh, you are not supposed to uh, make child, do child labor we are not allowed to do child we are not allowed to have child labor in our country traditional in, uh, indian society has been hierarchical that has encouraged exploitation in many forms traditionally uh, indian society was hierarchical brahmin shudra you had caste system and everything so uh, there was a lot of exploitation but now there is a right against exploitation exploitation cannot happen in india what is why is constitution makes uh, again uh, provisions against exploitation the citizens have been guaranteed right against exploitation in article 23 and 24 prohibition of traffic in human beings and forced labor human trafficking and other similar forms of forced labor are prohibited and any breach of these provisions shall lead to a uh, punishable offense so human beings sometimes they are um matlab um, earlier they used to be made slaves and things like that human trafficking would happen but now it's prohibited you can't do that okay prohibition of employment of children in factory so uh, as the constitution provides no child below the age of 14 shall be employed to work in a factory or mine or engage in any hazardous employment this right aims to end eliminating one of the serious problems of our today's era that is child labor children are assets to the society it is the basic right to enjoy a happy childhood childhood and get education but as soon as shown Uh, in the illustrations as you also have observed that the problem of child labor still still exists and this is a malice in our society with this we are done with our chapter of fundamental rights okay i want you to go into depth i want you to read a little more about it i want you to research more about it okay uh, just don't limit your Um, studies to this much get to know more about fundamental rights so that you will you could you can know what is your right how how can you be a better citizen of india happy learning and take care